In this episode, we're going to take a look at two proposals that are on the board right now that will have a massive impact on Splinterlands the game as we know it. If you're interested in the financial health of Splinterlands, please stand by. Hey all you Splinterheads, welcome back. Bronze Dragon here saying hey, thanks for dropping by. I appreciate your time. If you like Splinterlands content, please like and subscribe. Pass it around to your friends who also enjoy Web3 type content as well. Okay, with that said, we're going to jump in and I want to be very upfront. Um, what I'm going to cover tonight uh, just kind of is a little bit depressing from the overall aspect of um, the feeling I get from these two proposals. Um, and we'll we'll talk about it at the end in a, a, a summation that I'm going to bring forward. Uh, if you're looking for answers for me, I, I don't really have a whole lot of answers, but I can lend a little bit of a personal opinion on here. But let's take a look at it. Once again, uh, as always, I will leave the links in the show notes, but you can find this pre-proposal in the usual location under the SPS and proposals, pre-proposals. This one's titled SPS Governance Proposal, Hire JPTR Corp to Develop SPS Chain. And I'm not going to read this whole thing. Uh, you can go and I would suggest that you read through it because, and I wasn't clickbaiting anybody right up front. This, along with another um, uh, proposal that I'm going to also talk about because I think they dovetail together, um, is going to have from a, a company, uh, a financial standpoint, these are going to have a huge impact on the company as we know it, uh, Steam Monsters slash Splinterlands. Okay, let's go ahead and jump into it. What is this about? Okay, the, uh, the short version of this is that uh, if you uh, go back a few months, the team hired on some people to complete specifically for the purpose to complete the development of the SPS chain, okay? And we'll go through, and he makes some statements in here, um, but this is something, keep in mind when you're reading about this, this is something that's always been planned. It's just been put on the back burner, okay? So Matt starts off by saying, before getting into the proposal, we should like to uh, provide some important context about the current state of the SPS token and what the Splinterlands company is and is not able to provide going forward. So this is gonna be a very important division of duties here, okay? When the SPS token first launched in 2021, 3.6 million was raised in a private sale. This is where the SPS DAO got its funds. A portion of those funds have been spent on various things over the past few years, including legal services, marketing, exchange listings, liquidity pools, hiring, etc. The primary purpose for which these funds were meant to be used, however, was build out the infrastructure necessary to operate the SPS token in an open and decentralized manner. Okay. At launch, the Splinterlands company went ahead and built out the infrastructure to run the token in a closed and centralized manner without asking for funds from the DAO to do so, which was meant to only be a temporary measure until the open source SPS validator software was completed, which would allow the SPS token to run as its own layer two chain on top of Hive, which we are now calling the SPS chain. This is very similar to how other games uh, run on ETH and other blockchains. Um, so they're running on a side chain. Uh, makes it more efficient. You're not clogging up the main chain. Uh, it's decentralized, etc. Many different benefits. Unfortunately, since the temporary solution was implemented and works well, there are never there was never much urgency to build out the open decentralized solution that was originally intended. As a result, the Splinterlands company has been operating the SPS token in a centralized manner for the past three years and paying all the costs to build and maintain the temporary implementation as well as to build out the SPS validator software, despite that being the main purpose of the DAO's funds. For many reasons, the company is no longer in a position to keep doing this, and responsibility for the building and operating the SPS token infrastructure must be turned over to the SPS DAO. This means that the Splinterlands company will no longer be spending any time or resources working on the SPS validator software going forward, and as of J July 1, 2025, next year, we will no longer continue to operate the SPS token through the temporary Im implementation that is currently in place. 
That gives the SPS DAO one year to build and launch a separate solution to operate the SPS token. We believe that the best path forward is for the DAO to hire the developers that have recently been brought on by Splinterlands to finish the validator software, which is what this proposal intends to do. It is important to note that the DAO does not have to go with the solution proposed here. Someone can, you know, propose something else and bring in, uh, bring up uh, other solutions. And then they go on to talk about the JPTR Corporation uh, and uh, their work. Uh, this is a member on Discord named PJ, and apparently he's had connections with the team in the past, worked with the team, um, and worked on this software in the past. Uh, so. The details, I'll skip through a little bit here, but the details of what they're asking is the SPS DAO will pay the, the corporation, JPTR, $40,000 US dollars per month for each of the next 12 months in USDC, USDT, or ETH. Okay, and the treasurer can decide uh, which tokens to use. Um, on the surface, this is enough to uh, ha basically have a small team uh, uh, developing. Um, I don't know why it would take a full year, but I'm not a developer. Um, they go on to say that uh, JPTR will complete and release an open source software package on or before March 1, 2025. That's what's expected of them in the contract. The above mentioned release will be at a minimum support all the currently. Um, so they're going to support everything. They're going to support uh, implementing it, getting it up and running and all the functionality. So not only are they on the hook for developing it, they're on the hook for supporting it as well and maintaining it. So I don't know uh, what specifically, how long they will maintain it, et cetera. There's no details um, um, about that. And he goes on to say regarding the cost, building out a layer two blockchain platform and integrating it with a large existing project is a very significant undertaking to say the least. So I, you know, I don't know. Uh, I'll have to take his word for it. Uh, he's been dealing with this for quite a long time. Um, I don't know why this has not been brought up up to this point. Maybe they hired him on, decided something extra needed to be done, and they needed to shed this financial liability, uh, which uh, I think this is one of my overall points of this video. Um, and we're going to take a look at uh, another thing Matt put up um, at the same time. Uh, as far as proposals go, um, this is going to impact the game huge. Now, what I would like to know in details is, and he doesn't go into the details as far as what kind of SPS functionality would we lose should the temporary imp temporary implementation of the SPS um, chain go down as far as like say next year comes and goes and they turn it off. What functionality are we lose losing? It would be nice to know that. But with that said, I don't have anything against using the DAO funds for what they were initially intended for, okay? This is no secret, it's been out there. You know, this is information that just never, it just never happened until this point. So I don't, upfront, I don't have a, a problem with using the DAO funds for the implementation. As far as the details go, I can't put any opinion on that because I don't know, I'm not that far into development, I don't know the costs. Etc. So I do know that it takes a fair amount of money to field a team for a full year as far as after that year comes and goes and they are they on the hook for uh, maintaining the software and supporting it. And are we going to be on the hook for more fees after that to pay them? I don't know. But um, it just kind of goes down that road of um, just trying to be a little bit more upbeat here. Uh, Matt is taking all aspects of the financial viability of the company into perspective. And it seems to me this is just another thing where he can shed some more costs and use the DAO for what it was intended to use, be used for, right? Okay, so that was the first proposal. Now, the second proposal is not from the SPS DAO. It's over on the DHF, which I had to look up because I didn't know exactly what it was, but it's the Decentralized Hive Fund. And after reading through it, I wanted to know, well, what exactly is the Decentralized Hive Fund meant for? Right on the Hive website, it states, the development of Hive and its ecosystem is made possible by the community to incentivize crucial work the same community can engage in stake weighted voting to fund proposals via the DHF. So basically there's some hive out there that people can vote to support various projects. Okay. Now Splinterlands 
for a long time has been, if not the biggest, one of the biggest uh, Hive projects there is. So let's go ahead and take a look at um, the proposal. And once again, the link will be in the show notes because uh, if you believe in this, you need to go over, ahead, uh, go over and vote. If you have some staked Hive, um, and use whatever uh, staked hive you have to vote behind, vote for this. Um, okay, so what is this? Uh, we'll look at the details here, but basically this is Matt asking for some money out of the DHF to support Splinter Lands. That's basically what it is, okay? And Matt goes on to say, this proposal and request is being written by Yabba Matt, uh, co-founder and president of CEO of Steam Monsters, the company behind the blockchain-based game Splinterlands, formerly Steam Monsters, that has been operating on the high blockchain and previously Steam blockchain for the past six years. Uh, for years, Splinterlands has prided ourselves on oper operating a profitable business and on being able to provide significant value back to the Hive community who have made it all possible. We have purchased millions of Hive tokens off of external markets. We have burned millions of Hive tokens to create accounts. We have funded and initially designed and built two of the most widely used tools on the platform, that being Hive Engine and Hive Keychain. And we have bought thousands of, brought thousands of users and tons of attention to the Hive blockchain during that time. It is with extreme humility that I'm now asking the Hive community for help. Okay, so, and then he goes, goes into what has led uh, the Steam Monsters slash Splinterlands company into the position that they are in now. And as we've discussed in previous town halls, one of his jobs now is trying to raise capital for the company. So one of the logical places is let's go to Hive and see if we can raise some capital there because we've brought a lot of value to their um Blockchain, right? And this is really important here. The raising capital section, uh, like I said, if you're if you're interested in the future of Splinterlands, I would really go read through this. Okay, so we all know if you are out and uh, looking through the social media and the reports of various other Web three type games, um, Hive is down towards the bottom. Okay, I don't know why. I mean, Hive the Hive blockchain seems and Matt. Uh, thinks that it's one of the best blockchains to build on, right? There's a lot of advantages of it. However, there must all also be some uh, disadvantages of it because there's not many big companies on Hive right now. So in this section, he goes through and provides a, a basis for asking for the capital. But here's a key takeaway here. He's also basically implying and saying almost outright that if we possibly don't get this funding, we could possibly have to leave uh, the Hive blockchain, which is a huge uh, project, I imagine. Okay, so that's interesting there. Now, what uh, they're asking for is um, 50,000 Hive back dollars in funding paid out over the next six months. That's 2,777 Hive back dollars per day. And it's also worth noting that he says here that Splinterlands will not sell the HBD received from this proposal on external markets. Instead, they plan to swap it for our in-game token DEC, helping DEC out on Hive Engine using the liquidity pools there. We are able to convert DEC to US dollars when needed to fund the marketing campaign, etc. Um, and then uh, he gives some other reasoning, uh, basically saying that he thinks it's fair with what Splinterlands has brought to the high blockchain that uh, this was a legit legitimate request. Okay, so go take a look at it. Uh, if, I would say if you're a Splinterlands player, you really need to vote for it. Okay, now the reason why I talked about both of these proposals back to back. And uh, once again, this is a, uh, the SPS governance proposal, higher JPTR is a pre-proposal at this point. But I think it really, I think they, uh, they go hand in hand, okay? Now, what do I say? Uh, why do I say that? Uh, I say that because if this funding does not come through um, from the DHF, how serious is Matt about moving 
the uh, moving blockchains, okay? That's what my reasoning is. Now, a lot of us out here have our own opinions of which blockchain is better, et cetera, et cetera. I haven't had too much problem with Hive. I mean, once in a while it, get con it gets congested, but the overall point of this is pulling us off and onto our own secondary chain, right? And then we wouldn't have to worry about Hive being congested and the issues that that brings, you know, backlog and everything like that. But the reason I say that is because they're both, if this doesn't pass and Matt is serious about moving blockchains, wouldn't this be a waste of money? Or possibly would this, um, would this R&D effort to create or to uh, develop the SPS sidechain, would that be usable in a different way uh, with a different chain. Simply put, if we go to the time and expense of developing the SPS chain, is all that money and time wasted uh, if we end up moving to another blockchain? Um, I can't answer that at this point. That's just kind of a question in my head. Um, also, uh, people brought up in the comments um, uh, ideas as far as, well, this money should be spent on other things. Well, let me bring this up. I'm voting for this because it's always been in the books. This is always what that money was supposed to be allocated for. And if Matt thinks that that is where the money should go to, who am I to second guess him? I mean, at this point, you know, that's specifically what that was set aside for. So I'll vote for it. Um, and as far as the other one, I think it's a no brainer. If you're a Splinterlands uh, player, go throw whatever, whatever vote weight you have uh on Hive behind this proposal, um, it can only be good for uh, Splinterlands. How long is this is basically seems like a shot in the arm to me. I don't know how long, uh, how much $500,000 is to the company. Obviously it's better than nothing, um, but it just seems like a temporary, you know, shot in the arm to the company. And this is, this is why I don't really like covering topics like this because it's kind of depressing. It's a it's a game that we've all got into and we're all behind and had fun playing and uh, spent a lot of time and money in and then to see it uh, basically on life support. Um, to, to say one pro for the whole situation is I'll give Matt uh, some his dues because it, it seems like he's trying to cover this from all different angles. Where Whether you agree with everything he's doing or not, uh, this is just another way to go ahead and, uh, between these two proposals, shed some expense from the company and then uh, onto a source that was specifically meant for it, meant the SPS DAO, right? And get another shot in, or a shot in the arm from the Hive Fund uh, to keep the company going. Um, so there we stand. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments section. This has been Bronze Dragon. I hope everyone on your side is happy and healthy, and I will see you in Splinterlands.